Did you know that as of this episode being recorded, there are only 273 master sommeliers in the world? Meet Yuki Hiroshi, the newest master sommelier who earned his pin less than a month ago. When they finished, you know what it's feel like for six wines, I've done it. I was like, nah, that wasn't my best shot. Wow. It, when the feedback time, you know, the, the master sit down in front of you and after the exam, now, how do you feel? And I was like, I said, no, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't my best, but I did what I need to do. And he goes, or well, Edward goes, okay, you missed this. Now you need to work on this, this, but I'm happy to tell you pass. And I was like, what? Your name is Carlos Simio, uh, Santos Simio, Simio Santos. Yeah, whatever. What is your name? So good. Carlos Simo Santos. What the fuck? Yeah. What are you saying? Carlos, Carlos? Simões Santos. And this is Carlos Simões Santos. <laughs> <laughs> That's how everyone says it. Uh, me, me, I was, uh, I was pretty, I mean, pretty lucky. Um, I passed first year uh, service, second year tasting, and the third year theory. So it was three straight years. In this episode of Got Some, Yuki is going to tell us how just less than a month ago he passed the exam and he's going to reveal for the first time the six wines he guessed to get him over the line. And this is one of them. If you love wine, if you're studying wine or you want to take a deeper dive, this episode is for you. Salud. Salud. Mm. Very good. Huh? Very good. Well, for the first time, I think on this podcast, 75, 80 episodes in, we are going to start with a celebratory cheers. And that cheers is to you, Yuki. Congratulations. Sawood, as we say, the newest master sommelier in the world. Thank you. Thanks How's for... it feel? It feels good. It feels more like relief than anything else. So that, it's, you know, I don't have to wake up early and just... You actually enjoy sit back and enjoy the glass of wine rather than thinking, oh, what's the acidity, what's the tanning kind of stuff. So uh, it's really great feeling. And uh, obviously, I'm really happy to say, you know, people who supported me along this way to say, hey, thank you very much. I made it because, um, you know, this is my this was my sixth trial. So every single time, you know, five, five times of coming back and say, oh, look, sorry, I, you know, I feel, how to say, because uh, everyone's before the exam, everyone's going, Yuki, you got this. You're going to pass this. Mm. And I, it, more pressures on me, right? Expectation. And then, expectation. And then come back and then they defeated and they just really feel bad or I feel like I let them down um, bringing in the bad news because they believe in me, they, they support me and everything, but I couldn't make it. So I really, really feel happy for them like thanks so much for you guys you know what you did to me i made it and that i feel like i how to say like i uh yeah i make them happy basically so it's uh i, I don't care about myself but it's really great to bring that good news for my colleagues peers, peers and uh, my girlfriend of my my partner of course mm. so that was the that was my first feeling like, oh, shit, that's good <laughs> relief uh, <laughs> relief and uh yeah thanks for 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 others, yeah. So you said the sixth time? Yeah, I f the it was uh, it's complicated because we have a COVID break for two years of a COVID break. Yes, I couldn't go to the exam for in the UK or you, uh, Europe, so I s had a two years of break and I come back last year for after two years of break. So, but I only have a tasting to go. So, um, I took my theory and the service before the COVID, and then COVID hit, and then two years break. And I went back last year uh, for first time after COVID for tasting, which I didn't pass. Actually, I got COVID over there in the one before the exam. Oh, <laughs> how good to assess wine without a nose. Like, oh, I didn't smell anything. And then this year, it's my six times. And again, I only got tasting to go. And um, it's much I, Well, I didn't feel that way. I, I, when I finished, you know what it's feel like for six wines, I've done it. I was like, nah, that wasn't my best shot. Wow. It, when the feedback time, you know, the, the master sit down in front of you and after the exam, now, how do you feel? And I was like, I said, no, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't my best, but I did what I need to do. And he goes, or well, Edward goes, okay, you missed this. Now you need to work on this, this, but I'm happy to tell you pass. And I was like, wow. what? You just said that I missed this, this, this. And he goes, yeah, but other than that, you're excellent tasting. And I just, because as I said, it's 
six or eight years of time, like I couldn't understand that straight away. It doesn't come, it comes in like straight away. And I was like, still like, confused. And I was like, you know, because it, normally people say, yes. And like, oh, I'm passing it. Cause I last five times that I, I hear that kind of scream or happy, happy, happy scream everywhere. Um, but. I couldn't do it. I just like just didn't get it. I was like, and then it took me a couple of days to, you know, um, assimilate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes in. So that was uh, that was my journey, and then uh, I'm glad that it's over. I don't want to be arrogant, but Carlos has said that I would probably pass it on my first year. Um, <laughs> now, Carlos, you're doing well. You're doing well, very well. You. You're no, doing. Uh... But it wasn't your first time either. It took you a few attempts to get it right. Yeah. So it's, this is not an unusual thing for somebody. You know, you can pass theory, you can pass service, you can not pass wine, or you can pass wine taste, and you can not pass service. How many years was it for you as well, Carlos? Uh, me, me, I was, uh, I was pretty. I mean, pretty lucky. Um, I passed first year uh, service second year tasting and the third year theory so it was three straight years but can but you yeah, do them I all mean, at once you can right you can there's so you... been people good friends of us that that have done that have done that uh ben asco was uh one Passing attempt first goal Boom, yeah to first go goal. so but you oh okay so this is interesting for me you elected to go over there and do one or did you try them all and you only try them all one. at once? Yeah. So in the US chapter is a little bit different because they you will have to first pass theory in order to then take the tasting and the practical. But in Europe, uh, but in Europe, you each time you go, you can attempt the tree. So, oh, cool! And then if you pass the tree, good on you. There's not been many people that have passed the tree, but you may just pass one of the three parts next year when you come back you only have to pass two or, or one or you could pass whatever. two at the first and come exactly. back and do one dorian correct. for instance passed two at first and then on the on the second and then on the second year he did not pass anything oh. he still failed the uh, theory on the second year and when he came on the third year that's when he passed gotcha and your journey was one 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 for three correct. years. correct yeah okay. correct that's so, yeah yeah well, Yuki, it's incredible to um, have, you know, such a esteemed guests <laughs> and hosts on, on the Thank show. You. But can, going back to the beginning for you, why wine? And, and also take us back to, are you you're Japanese? I'm Japanese. I'm yeah. from Tokyo. So, yes. second, second ever um, master hey. sommelier from Japan. Yeah, well, the Toru, the little young kid guy who just, uh, I, actually, I, I was teaching. I taught him how to taste and he took you his You were master. his mentor. Oh, wow. wow. He, he, and he go, he just yeah. banned the second or third time he passed that. So he just, uh, some people make this exam look easy. Like, like oh, I just passed the first time or second time. Like, like why am I not passing it? So that's almost like, for me, it's almost not anger, but, you know, like, well, if, if Carlos can pass, I can pass that too, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's the feeling that keeps coming back. But the stars but, have to align in some respect for it to be, you know, the night before you might have been doing flashcards on the exact question that might have been in theory, or you might have done it at the first day of your study 11 months prior. So, I mean, some of the things really need to line up for it to be, you know, um, the perfect sort of assessment for you. Um, but Japan, my favorite country in the entire world, minus Australia, um, <laughs> I've been to Japan four or five times. Right. I obsessed with it. I think it's mm. one of the best countries in the world, but when I'm there, I'm drinking beer and sake. That's what you should do. <laughs> but it's not a huge wine. My, my point is like, there is obviously mm. wine there, but some of them are even more sweeter styles of wine from my experience or like plum True. wine. I don't know. But, for you, how did you get a passion for wine or was it because you've been in Australia for such a period of time? Yeah, well, I moved here in 2005. So it's actually almost, you know, I'm almost half and a half. I left Japan when I was 22, 23 years old. And so I was working in the restaurant industry or working behind the bar. Actually, I want to be a bartender, you know, like, you know, shake cocktails and because I was, you know, I was 19 years old and but I wanted to work in a hotel. So that pushes me out from Japan because I need to speak English. And then, you know, I want to, you know, I want to learn English. I want to learn the culture with, you know, those people who has blue eyes and, uh, and, uh, and the blonde hairs. Uh, so that pushed me out to do from Japan and then came here, uh, obviously started working in some hospital restaurant or hotels and, and this just realized that it's, you know, wine in Australia is, it's relatively inexpensive and the quality was really, really good. Um, also in Australia, the whiskey and those th things are pretty more expensive than Japan because they tax things. So I just naturally drawing into, to the wine and that's the way I start sort of into the wine and start 
uh, listening other people's and sort of learning from you know books and everything. Uh, but there is nothing really. Um, in, I didn't. Nothing happened in Japan per se. But it's what I was just behind the bar uh, making cocktail, and I actually the restaurant I worked in Tokyo. There's a sommelier and. I don't know, you know, I didn't know what somebody is or what the, this person is, but wearing jacket and they're pouring suit, uh, pouring wine in the suit. So I was like, oh, he's really cool. And you know, what what does he do? And he's a somebody. And he's actually, he's Aussie. Uh, he's half Australian, half Japanese. And uh, that was the first time that I heard somebody um, back in Japan. But then I just came all the way and then come this far. So it's a, it's a, a little bit of a journey for me. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. What? Um, so back to the uh, back to the exam. I mean, we met. Mm. We met in the in the wine exam, which was our advanced back long time ago, probably like yeah. twelve years ago or so. Something like that. Yeah. Ten, twelve years ago, uh, Henley and Thames, and yeah, and which then, we were both doing the advanced, and we both failed. And we both <laughs> failed. <laughs> there was uh, out of the group of six or seven of us. Um, well, there was like thirty people or something. Out of the group, I knew. Uh, only Dorian Pass at that time. Right. Um, so, but long journey. So what, what has taken you from, from since, uh, you know, how did you prepare your, your studies? How, what worked for you? What didn't work, um, to make you pass now in your opinion? And mm. if you were to give, uh, mm. like help to young people that wants mm. to, wants to pass the exam. Funny enough, I was teaching at WSET on, uh, on Monday mm -hmm. and, uh, one student came to me, he's like, I want to be master sommelier. She's 22 yeah. years old and uh, she wants cool. to be master sommelier at 30. She's like, my goal is at 30. Uh, well, that's very oh, courageous. That's very good, good luck. Yeah. Um, so if you were to talk to her, for example, what would you, what would you say today? I wish I had some like a great tips or some, you know, hint to become how to become MS. But like really honest with you, I haven't figured out. I only I can say because I try five or six times, it's just all about try and failed. And then you trying to figure out what was the problem, what caused me fail the last time. And you try a different angle. And it didn't work and try this way. And that's how you just, um, you know, step by step and you just need to do it and then believe what you do. And of course it's some devastation or, or, or disappointment happened, but you, then you don't give up, you know, and just keep doing every year, uh, slightly differently. So as I said, the last five times or six times, Every year I try to do some different approach in mm -hmm. and the frustrating things is that I don't know if I'm doing correct, you know, is yeah. this the right way? Because no one's going to tell me and mm -hmm. only probably the result will tell me. And that's why I'm really happy that this time, okay, what I was doing wasn't wrong. You know, it was, it, at least it worked for me. So, mm -hmm. so whatever, you know, open tasting, brine tasting, you know, tasting similar wine or, or the same grape varietal, mm -hmm. the, all sorts of the, uh, uh, blind tasting uh, practice is available, but you really sort of try, you know, what you think it works and then give a crack, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, a really so good crap. And then just, uh, you know, come back and think if it's passed, it's great, of course, but if you fail, you know, it's the, you know, I miss must uh, gives us a kind of limited feedback on what's you mm -hmm. know what wasn't great yeah. so you just need really need to sit down and you know by yourself and think what 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 didn't work why did why i didn't pass mm -hmm. this time so kind of stuff mm -hmm. so for example uh, i mean we met a few times mm. at uh at the uh, Dumont, for example for wine mm. tastings etc and i saw you many more times with dorin as well and i'm mm. sure you tasted with loik and everyone else um, but so after each tasting, you tasted six wines mm. and the wines that went wrong, what did you do? So you, you go back, do you, you find you out think what they about, are, uh, after, not on the exam, but no, when afterwards. we do tasting with us, yeah. When you oh, do tasting with you. friends and people that is helping you, we show the bottles. So, of course, so you get them wrong or right. And mm. obviously you feel happy for the ones you got right for the ones you got wrong. What's your approach? Then you go back home and think about them. You write tasting notes or. or 
just buy a bottle of wine and drink until you get so smashed that you actually <laughs> never going to miss it again. <laughs> no, I think that um, with the, the general support from you and Dorian or everyone else, I record myself like this and mm -hmm. I list because it's, it's just hard to remember if the 25 minutes you're describing six wines. So I recorded myself and I record including your feedback from you or from, from anyone and then and then go back home or whatever, and then you listen, okay, go back to number six, the one you, you I missed, right? Mm -hmm. And then I listen how I describe it. Okay, I said this, this is, okay, the, the, this fruit is missing. Okay, I I repeated this three times in this, mm -hmm. you know, on the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the tasting, yeah. In the tasting. So things like that. And I just listen, you know, what I said and what's missing from them. And then, of course, there's some struggle, uh, some particular grape Velato that struggle with the most, and uh, you taste uh, alongside with what the similarity, like I say, you know, everyone's same, Arab Nino versus mm -hmm. Pinot Grigio, mm -hmm. and uh, the Gruna Velina. But you just, uh, again, you know, just come back to what I said, is just try and fail. And in the end, I feel like that I got the Gruna Verlina, like one day it's really suddenly it's mm -hmm. the Gruna Verlina comes into me, like quite easily recognize the Gruna Verlina because just, but I think how like many, many times, like what's a Gruna Verlina? What, why am I not getting this peppery note to it? But it just to have something else that is reason at me in, in the wine. Mm -hmm. Then once that um, happened, as long as the, the wine's true to the style, classic in the style, mm -hmm. I can pretty much know that the Gruner, but because of it's just thinks a lot and they listen to myself a lot, um, that that's how I did. So uh, I don't know to answer your question. If you have some, you know, problem or more difficult wines, mm -hmm. you just uh, you just going to record and you just listen yourself mm -hmm. and, you know, read what the classic Disprukta is and a taste and side by side and just go over and over again mm -hmm. again you know the peppery note is it doesn't work for you then you need to find some other markers yep. like for me it's like more like lentils or kind of green yep. snow peas kind of stuff but that's for me that doesn't mean that it works yep. for you yeah you just need to find that the uh, key markers well who was the first person who said Opening a can of tennis balls for Riesling. Yeah. I mean, can we use that in the MS exam? No, probably <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. they will be like, they will be what? snapping your forehead. Yeah. I, I um, want to continue this conversation, but yeah. while we're talking about tasting, should we talk about the wine that you've brought in today? Because it's very, uh, very specific choice. Yes, I chose this wine because I think I got this wine, not this particular wine, but that this this kind of wine in our in my tasting in the exam uh which past months uh yes it's quite distinctive yeah it smells so unique yeah and it's uh yeah god there's so much fruit on this nose but different uh, fruit. sauvignon blanc semillon yeah it's actually more semillon than sauvignon blanc it's uh, almost a half of the 65 percent semillon and the rest is the sauvignon blanc it's all barrel fermented Wow. Uh, again, the Sauvignon Blanc is something it may make him come back, no? You think, Carlos? Cause yeah, it's definitely. Sort of... Semillon, big time. I think so. I mean, yeah. I love the styles of Sauvignon Blanc from the Hunter, for example, with a mm -hmm. lot of age. Yeah. Uh, I think... This does not taste and smell like what I know to be Marlborough, New Zealand, Savannah. Uh, ah, no, it's different. It's Bordeaux. I know, but which no, is where I it's think, from. Uh, the, the, you know, the I think Sauvignon Blanc is a huge, 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 huge potential, mm. and I think it's been super, super underrated, I find, yeah. uh, including the wines of Bordeaux. I mean, the wines of Dante Valley. No one really drinks Semillon in this country, right? No one goes no. to a restaurant. No one goes to the restaurant and orders a bottle of Semillon, mm. right? Um, but uh, but it's amazing when you amazing. when you age it, yeah. Correct. I think this again, the Sauvignon Blanc, a little bit abused in a way in New Zealand, tons yeah. of sort of uh, uh, on your face perfumey, yeah, super uh, grassy notes. So then, but also as I said, it's coming back as a, I, I can see in in the restaurant industry. But anyway, this wine for me is a we don't see those um, Bordeaux Blanc that many in Australian market. Um, but naturally, those say the white wine from the Pesach Reunion or Bordeaux is maybe about 10, 15 percent of mm -hmm. production mm -hmm. of the total production. So it's really small production to start with. And then 
again, because the Bordeaux, everyone knows that it's really expensive and a high price tag yeah. with it. And a white wine is no difference. It's, this is very uh, uh, high price point categories. Mm-hmm. And if you, people don't know, you know, Bordeaux known as a such, uh, known as a red wine regions, and so no one really gonna pay this much mm-hmm. money for the uh, white wine that's never heard of. But uh, I think it's really, really interesting and it's, as I said, it's quite characterful. Mm. Um, is, I get a, like a really juicy orange peach on the nose. Yeah, definitely. That's good. Orange um, peach, uh, even a touch of nettle, like greeny herbal, well. slight green herbal on the, no- on the nose to start. It's such a different Sauvignon Blanc to what Australians would be used to. Yeah, it's got texture as well, kind of white and power on the palate. So it really kind of calling for a little bit more dish or chicken dish or something like that because... Uh, it's not nothing. Some not something you go on. A, you know, open in as an aperitif. You can you can do that, but it's really has that a, a uh, the texture to yeah. to um, food wine to go with the yeah, food wine. Why? And what is the particular bottle that you bought in today, just so people can understand if we're tasting it? The, the Chateau Latou La Martiac, two thousand and eighteen vintage. So it's sitting on the Pesac Reunion, which is southern part of the Medoc, if you know the left left bank of the border. So there's a as I said, a small production of white wine in the region. They have uh, some clay in the soil, Pesac Reunion. So um, there's a gravel as well as a clay. Uh, some The Chateau uh, Latour Martiac planted those Sauvignon, Semyon Sauvignon in particular um, uh, vineyard. And then they really perform as well, those white grape varietals. So they're trying to push more production, but they just, you cannot plant anywhere that you like, you know, you just need to be very specific terroir that they suit suitable for this barato. But it is a wonderful white wine. Six glasses in front of you. This is a month ago, by the way. Wow. I can still remember, yeah. What did you think the wines were? I mean, you'd never know because they won't tell you, but you got them right and you probably were one of the only ones. How many people passed your uh, tasting? Two, there's another gentleman. Passed. Two yeah, people. first uh, Greek. Yeah, I, I don't know him that well. Uh, personally but uh, yeah he's a nice gentleman bringing the total to 273 in the oh, world is it? i think so okay. <laughs> i did a little bit of research i think it's 273, uh, 273. with the two yeah cool. so um, um i i look i honestly i don't know if how many wines it got but it's first of all they normally do three white three reds as you know but this year we got two whites and four reds Ooh. that's already when you when you're coming into the yeah, walking into the exam room, I was like, what? I would have rocked uh, you a little yeah. bit. And you've done it a bunch of times as well, so you're but, used to what you're expecting. Yeah, but it's okay, like two whites and four reds. I prob- probably prefer that rather than four whites mm. and two reds. Yeah. Probably, because it's a uh, red wine has a bit more character to it. Um, so I think I missed the first wine pretty much because I just honestly have no idea what what wines were and of course after the exam we everyone talks about oh what did you call what did you call and ev- i hear the, every like every possible great valata on the table like someone called riesling someone called sauvignon Blanc. i think i call pinot gris but i call it high acidity so that's already doesn't really make sense so pinot mm-hmm. gris tend to be sort of moderate or you know medium plus acid but it was pretty tart but so i missed that first wine the second wine was I believe that was Bordeaux Brom, uh, but it has a little bit more subtle uh, in style. It doesn't have that kind of intense tropical fruits note like this wine has, but de- definitely see that in green, but the ripe green, mm-hmm. you know, like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, the right, yeah. yeah. This this color, this is that color, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> has and a, great has, color, tropical as well, mm. yeah. And it has a, has a little bit of oak, um, uh, oak, oak note to it. So I think the second one was Bordeaux Blanc, or at least some Sauvignon Blanc with the barrel fermented. It makes sense. And then the, the then third one is already red wine. Huh? And it was, it <laughs> and was then a, you on your park. It is already brown color to it. And I was like, oh, what's some got some age on that? So uh, I think I call the aged Burgundy. Mm-hmm. Again, some people call uh, uh, Oregon. Old... I, I said 2012. Just a, one of the Givray or Chambon Musigny, things like that. But it has that earthy kind of, well, not farm yet, but you know, when it get the um, age Burgundy, has a little bit kind of leafy, um, turned earth kind of character to it. So that was my third one. And then I call, uh, and, um, sorry, the Sangiovese for the fourth. There's a fourth in it. 
And then fifth is Malbec. And the last one I called the New World Cabernet. Uh, it was quite polished. It could be Margarita. I call I said I call the California, but didn't have that like a darkness of the of the you know the, you know the ca- Californian cabin is really chocolatey. It has a little bit more leafy lift uh, lifted note to it. So I wouldn't surprise that was a, a Margarita cab. But because I'm from Australia, I'd be hesitant to call you know Aussie wine. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know who knows. But this is interesting just because I think um, you know telling what you think the wines were, and if you pass, you're probably very likely right. Mm. But I think it's just the options that you put on the table of what the wines you tasted could mm. be. You know, it could be mm. Margaret, could be Bordeaux to some extent, but then no, mm. because it's riper. Because this is just to explain, I think, to people mm. that how many wines you have to taste and how much knowledge you have to taste of, or how much knowledge you have to have of all these wine regions in the world to actually, when you taste the wine, to place it to the right spot, mm. right? That's, uh, yeah, that's mm. the most impressive, I think. So for the, this is for both of you, obviously, but when you're um, guessing the wines, how, what detail do you have to go down to? Because I've seen Somme and I've seen the follow-up to Somme and there's some guy, you know, American bloke, quite bullish, mm-hmm. and he like smelled the exact bottle of wine in a blind tasting for this documentary and they were like, whoa, like down to the vintage. For you no, guys to pass, I, how do we have to get vintage? Do we have to get, you know, every, every exact point. winery? So everything you say is a point. You know, if it's according to what is expected for the wine, you get a point for everything you say. So it comes down to passing with 75%. So, of course, if you get the vintage wrong, that you're missing one point. One. But you may have to get that point somewhere else on your tasting grid. So, of course, it's a detective tasting. So you start with the whole world, and as you taste, you have to narrow it down to... And when you come to the conclusion, you have to be as accurate as possible to what the wine was, right? Or what the wine is. But, so, but like, you don't have to go like Jim Barry, Watervale Riesling, no, I think 2021. That's, you know, that's 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 going a little bit too far. But maybe, you need even to go the, Clare Valley? Yes. Yeah. Riesling, Correct. 2021. Correct. Okay, Correct. cool. So it's just accumulating the points, really. So, um, well, that's why it is. The old masters sort of taste those wine before the exam and then what kind of fruits is there is and then just got the one points for each citrus tropical and yeah it's okay to miss the vintage um look i don't know how actually mm-hmm. how the point system works yet mm-hmm. uh, probably we're gonna see you will learn coming future yeah. again we will, oh you learn. get behind the curtain now mm. okay I'm, I'm i'm curious actually yeah because yeah, ah, you will see you will see i can talk too much especially <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, uh, especially on the oh, camera you cannot... guys should get your own like uh rings what, what what's that um yeah. simpsons episode with the iron yeah what's yeah. that group whatever Do you get your own little uh secret society yeah <laughs> but uh yeah so the stone cutters stone, stone cutters yeah quick surprise test Oh, oh! You should be very ready, Yuki. Surprise test. Um, the Corsican grape variety Neluccio is better known by what Italian name? Sangiovese. Correct. In which region of which country is Rapsani produced? Rapsani is Greece in Macedonia. No, down the south, Peloponnese. Uh, Rapsen is definitely Greece for sure. It's Peloponnese, the, the south. I don't know. Rapsani is a coastal protected denomination of origin on the f- southern foothills of Mount Olympus. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, that's Mount Olympus. I think that's Peloponnese. But I need to study again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last question What is the predominant grape variety used to produce Etna Bianco Superior? Caricante? Correct! Hey, yes. I still got it. Ah, Mesa Nicola. So, okay, Thessalia, Rapsani, Mesa Nicola, and Anchialos. Anchialos. So, Rapsani grape, it's uh, Crasato, Stavroto. Yeah. That just shows the complexity of the world of wine, everybody. Um, Yuki, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, also, thanks for wearing the pin. I try and get Carlos to wear his pin. He did it for the first two or three episodes, and then he just gave up on it. He thinks he, it's like he, then he started wearing some grape one, the golden grape. Maybe he's lost it already. No, no he's I, got have, it. I have it, but I, I feel like um, I feel like uh, when I wear it, when I wear it, it feels is a special day for me. 
and oh. uh, it's a special day and it's a special occasion. And it took me so, I think, so long to get it that um, I still like to feel that when I wear it, it's a special day and it's a special occasion. So, okay. so on your wedding day, you're going to wear it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm wearing it every day. I'm wearing it in my pajama and then sleeping with it. <laughs> Fair enough. I, yeah, I would do. I only wore my WSE2 level two <laughs> pin in it. Um, <laughs> Yuki, but, sincere congratulations. No, thank you so much. Um, thanks for bringing in the wine that you think no, might have helped you get um, your, the pin on you today. And uh, for people who don't know, I mean, we're in Melbourne. Um, whereabouts are you working if people want to you know, come I, and check out? I work out? the uh, the Lucas Group. So it uh, has uh, seven restaurants. In Melbourne, one in New South Wales, uh, but it's, it's quite exciting. Um, first moving restaurant group, and I really enjoyed it. It's only here for two and a half. It's actually two and a half years now. I just moved from Sydney. Were uh, you work? Were you worked at Rockpool? I was at Rockpool for over ten years. So it was for me. It's a big, you know, big move. Even though from Sydney to Melbourne, not much. So just the but, curating of wine list for all of the restaurants under the Lucas Group? Is that Well, Lucas Group has a, a seven restaurant, but most of them is a more uh, kind of casual venues, like a pizza joint or sort of a chin chin, which, you know, you know chin -chin's chin -chin fantastic. Like. They have a great wine list, don't get me wrong, but they don't necessarily need any sommelier or anything on the floor. Yeah. But really sort of three or four restaurants which required sommelier and has over across the thousand wines on the wine list. That's where I need to sort of or I like to, you know, give a little bit of staff training, or wine, wine list structuring, uh, listing kind of stuff. So I, I, I've got a really good team. Every venue has a great head sommeliers. I'm just here to support here or there, filling in the gaps, or we just suggesting something. Okay, hey, I got, I found some misspelling here. Um, that's what I do. But I really enjoy uh, my job, and I, I'm, I'm glad that I made this move from Sydney. I mean, Sydney is lovely, but uh, it was time to, for me to do some new challenges, which is I found here. So I'm really looking forward to be, you know, uh, ex explore more in, in Melbourne and Victoria as a whole. Hmm. Well, let's let's uh, do a lunch or a dinner together. That'd be fun. Right. Um, thank you very much for your no, time, thank man. You. Thank, thank you. Thank so you. Thank you.